Hello everyone and welcome back to a new video. Now, it won't have been that long for you, but I haven't recorded <laughs> in quite a number of weeks. So, like I always say at the beginning of my videos, it's going to be a long one. I've got a lot to show you, but I do have a lot to show you. Um, I'm not going to go through everything that I've been knitting on because like I've said many times, I have a lot of projects on the go at once. I'm just going to kind of show you the things I've recently finished and what I've mainly been working on. And the last video, video, the last video you would have seen is just before I went to Austria. So I am now back from Austria and have been back in Germany for quite a while now. And I'm actually going to be in Austria again <laughs> relatively soon. But... A lot has kind of happened over the last few weeks, which I do kind of, there's some stuff I want to talk about, but I think I'm going to leave it for a future video because I was thinking, I could say it at the beginning, but then some people might not be interested. So, okay, I'll leave it for the end, but then some of the important stuff I want to talk about might get missed. And I was like, let's just leave it for another video and hopefully I'll actually, you know, record after a decent amount of, well, not as much time has passed. Let's get into the knitting. It's weird, I haven't filmed in quite a while, so it's always a bit odd doing it again. But let's start with what I'm wearing. It is quite hot here in Germany. It has been for quite a few weeks now. It rains off and on again, like I think it's currently raining, but it's still quite warm here. So I'm currently wearing my Fafa top, and it's actually the first time I've worn it because I was trying to figure out, like, why haven't I worn it? Um, because the yarn I use. So this is the Farfa top by the Knit Pearl Girl, which I showed last time that I'd finished it. It's got these really big like sleeves. You can make them even bigger if you want. But I used Tin Linen by Sanders Garn in this white colour. And I'm wearing a singlet underneath it because with this white colour, the gauge is just quite, pardon me, open and a little bit see-through. And so I'd been struggling to find like a singlet I wanted to wear under it and found one recently. So now I can actually wear it. And it's perfect for warm days because it's got big sleeves. I have a lot of positive ease on this top. Um, tin linen is also just 100% plant fiber. So it's uh, cotton, viscose, and linen. Um, and I do think the kind of, I got gauge with this yarn, but it's a lot more open of a gauge like looking like look wise than the original yarn which was pure silk by knitting for olive so i do want to make another one um this size is one size bigger than i normally would wear and i thought it would be fine for a summer top but it does mean it's quite wide on me and like it's good for summer because of how much positive ease i have so if i get really hot it's fine but there is just a lot of positive ease so it is quite big and I have to wear something under it, not just because of how see-through it is, but just because of how wide it is and everything. But personal preference, personal style. But yeah, if I make another one, I definitely would make it a size small. It's just Sophie needed test knitters for, I think it was the biggest size. And I was like, oh, I'm more than happy just to do the size bigger. It's not a big deal. Um, But yeah. I was going to talk about like how it was knitting it but then I was like I talked about it last time I don't need to talk about it now but that is what I'm wearing today on this quite warm but rainy day I love rain this is why I don't like summer I don't know how people who knit can say summer is their favorite season because you can't wear a lot of the nice knitted things unless you just don't knit with animal fibers I guess I have a lot of finished objects so let's get into it the first one I'm going to talk about is the one I didn't talk about until almost the end of my German video, which was smart. But um, I was in Austria, like I said at the beginning, to well see some of my family, um, but also to kind of pick up a few bits and bring them back with me here to Germany. And not just yarn, but also kind of projects that I've already got on the needles. And one of them is the Illuminate sweater, which I have now completely finished. Last time you saw it, which was a long time ago, um, I think the last time I shared it in an episode was last year, the last one I filmed in Austria. 
and all I had left to do was one sleeve. So I brought it back with me and it was one of the first things I kind of worked on when I was back in Germany and finished the sleeve in like two evenings, I think it was. And I still haven't woven in the ends and blocked it because I just can't be bothered apparently. But hopefully I'll do that soon with the warmer weather now means it will block much quicker. Um, There's nothing really to say because I'd already talked about kind of the other sleeve, but what I really love about this design is the color work. The stripes are fine, as in it makes it a bit easier to kind of get through the body and the sleeves, but it's definitely the color work yoke that's really impressive. And I use commercial yarn for this, all of it is. Uh, my main color here, the dark blue, is um, by BC Garn. I have no idea what it was, but it's like a sport weight one. And then I use a Surreal Packer Held Double for the contrast color, um, which is, I think, called like sage green, but it feels like a blue gray to me. But anyway, and it's by Fiber Spates. I think it's the Cumulus base. So it was all, all in all, a relatively affordable jumper, which was quite nice. And I already had the Surreal Packer in my stash and then just had to buy the sport weight one. But yeah, it took me quite a while to knit this up just because of like with my PhD and then my Viva and then moving and it just took a long time until it's actually done and I think I'm not motivated to like weave in the ends and block it because I can't wear it now until it's much warmer but I know especially the BC gun will really benefit from blocking because I think it's got quite a decent spin on it and so it makes all the stitches like really stand out in a not nice way and I know that will settle with blocking but yeah that's done other than you know those small bits that you have to do at the end with weaving in and blocking and I enjoyed it I don't think I'd knit that one again um like I said I really enjoyed the color work and I've seen people do it without the stripes which I could consider doing I'd also thought about whether it would be possible to continue the color work and have an all over color work sweater with that same kind of design it would involve a bit of work with like the sleeves and stuff but Maybe. Oh, pardon me, I'm tired now. Okay, mm, did I just give you spoilers? So another project that I picked up while I was in Austria is one I've had on my needles for also a long time. And it was kind of my project of one of those ones you just have on the needle and work on it when you need something kind of easy and mindless. And I finally finished it because I brought it with me from Austria and it is the Secret Crop Top by Jessie Maid designs so um it's a free knitting pattern i think this one and i've made one before but i did it in a hundred percent alpaca which is kind of stupid because it's meant to be kind of you know war not too warm and it's meant to be breathable and alpaca is really warm and not that breathable <laughs> but so this one's done in cotton in paint box dk i think which is a hundred percent cotton which i'd originally bought for the Luca cardigan, which is I think the first pattern I ever test knitted for Sophie the Nipoa. Um, I ended up using a different yarn because while I got gauge with this yarn, the kind of look of it was really open and see-through almost. And I was like, mm, I need something more dense. So then I had, because I already bought all of the <laughs> cotton I needed for that cardigan, I had so much lying around and didn't know what to do with it. And then eventually it was just like, well, it could be nice for this. The other one I made, I mainly used to sleep in in the warmer months when it would still get kind of cold at night. So I had a little bit like on me to keep me warm. Um, and I kind of wanted another one to, for example, wear under the Fafa top, but also to, lost my train of thought. <laughs> Um, wear just in the house when it's hot or wear under some other things also wear it for sleeping and things like that and it's knit bottom up and it's three by three ribbing and I made mine way longer than what the pattern says because it is meant to be like cropped and for me it's almost at my hips now which is kind of my preferred length um, and it's a really easy knit because it is a lot of ribbing obviously but the three by three I find quite fun to do and until you get to the point where you split the front and back it's just worked in the round nothing no shaping nothing 
and then you just have a little bit of shaping for the front here which is really easy to do and so it's just a really nice mindless little pattern um and i probably will make some more it's you don't need too much yarn for it which is always nice so you can kind of use up some scraps but i don't know i find with these kind of singlets and like crop tops cotton kind of makes the most sense because if i'm gonna wear something which doesn't provide much coverage it's because i'm hot and you can obviously just wear this out if you want to it's just not really my style and i don't feel comfortable in it but yeah i like them i like them not much to say really um something else that i finished i've got an absolute mess next to me where is it? And I don't want to give you any spoilers because I've got some exciting things done. There she is. So back in October? Yeah, October was when, when I had my Viva, yeah. Um, and my parents came to visit for that. My mum and I went into Dutton's for Buttons in York, which I've talked about a few times already. And they had some crochet kits by Toft and I've made one before and they had this little elf girl in there and i really liked her my mum bought me the kit which was really nice and i had started it back in december but didn't get a chance to finish her for like christmas time but she's done now i've been slowly kind of working away at her and i love her little like face and the hair and i think her outfit is really cute and after I finished this, I was like, now I want to dress like that. <laughs> and these tights are so cute. But it's amazing how these little things actually take a really long time to complete. You know, I often do these smaller projects as like a break from these big jumpers. But then this stuff also takes me a really long time to do because it's just fiddly. But it was enjoyable and she now sits on my desk at the top where my books are and just kind of keeps watch. <laughs> Um, but I can really highly recommend the kits by Toff. They're relatively pricey, but I do think they're quite worth it. And these kind of crochet things I really do enjoy um, as a bit of a change from kind of the knitting when I just need a break from it. So I thought I'd share that because I think that's very cute. Then... Because I was in Austria. Sorry, I keep looking at like my notes because I cannot remember all the stuff anymore. I used to be able to when I didn't have like as many things I was working on at once, but now too many. But when I was in Austria, I went to see both my grandmothers and gave them their shawls. So the first one I already talked about last time because it was done, but I finished the limelight. So I'd mentioned in that video that... Um, I wanted to get to like the lace section of the limelight by Anna Johanna and do that on the plane. And I did that. I didn't manage to finish it on the plane. It's only like an hour flight or something from Frankfurt to Vienna. But I kind of got through half the lace and then continued to work on that over the next few days in Austria and then finished it, I think like the day before we went to visit my grandparents. Um, and yeah, gave both my grandmas their sh respective shawls and they were loved and appreciated and it was really nice. And I, I have some pictures of the limelight. I forgot to take a video, I really wanted to take one. But I love that one so much. The color combo, the yarn just worked really well and I really want my own now in those exact colors. But I don't think I'm gonna knit it again anytime soon. Like I really did enjoy it. And it was one of those shawl projects that once again made me think, I don't know like I struggle with shawls but this one once again there is that pressure of like I wanted to get it done to give it to in person which probably helped but I really did enjoy the kind of like short rows that you have of the contrast color and then also the lace I love knitting lace um, and then you just had a bit of a break with the garter so it was overall a really fun and enjoyable knit and I've got plenty of other shawls I need to knit not just like that I want to knit, but I've also got ones I need to finish, so I won't be starting another anytime soon. <laughs> another finished object that I have is one I already shared last time where one of them was done, it, and it's the elf slippers from 52 Weeks of Shawls. So I've got both of them now, they're blocked, they're completely done, haven't worn them because it hasn't been, you know, cold enough for me to have to wear slippers. <laughs> 
most of the time I'm not even wearing socks because it's warm but yeah so they're both done I don't really have much to say about these because I already talked about them last time but all I can say is the color work is amazing the trickiest part is kind of starting um doing like a cast on with two colors um, and working the heel and then also the toes a bit tricky but once you've done one the second one is much easier and it doesn't use much yarn so i had two 100 gram skeins both from waker yarns this is nanyo and this is voltra river i think it's called this was my main color this was my contrast color and yeah i have a lot of yarn left and i do want to make another pair and make them for a friend of mine and so i might just use the same color combo again though i could kind of switch it um and i think i could even get a third pair pair out i've got about a european 42 like shoe size and so i've had i had to like knit these quite a bit longer than what the pattern says before they would fit and yeah and i've still got plenty of yarn left so if you only have like 50 gram skeins of dk yarn you'll be fine and you'll still have plenty of yarn left um, but you could, technically speaking, you need a bit more, obviously, of the main color. But for the contra contrast, you could totally use scraps and things and even, you know, use different colors throughout. I think that would look really cool as well. So I think they're a cool gift. I think um, they're a lot of fun to knit, which is always nice with gifts as well. And yeah, could be a nice scrappy project. With the main color, you need a bit more. But yeah, the contrast color, I think you could definitely get away with just using some leftover DK. And I just love how the colors are blended together. Color work always blows me away, especially with like the thicker yarns, when the yarn really just <laughs> blends together and it doesn't even look like, like it looks like magic. Like how did you use two colors there? Incredible. Yes. And then two more. Um, I shared this one last time. Um, as one of the test knit test knits that I've been working on um, and this one is the one that had like the first deadline and the pattern is out now and I shared about it on my Instagram as well and it is the No Sweatshirt by Park Williams called Park and Knit on Instagram so it's got a really cool hood and these iQuad straps which is nice and it's actually reverse stockinette so you've got all the pearl bumps on the outside and you can see the raglan looks really cool and you can technically speaking like wear it the other way the only thing is um where you pick up the hood is then visible so if you want to knit this but don't want the pearl side out that's the only thing where you then have to change things up everything else is okay the raglan might have to be worked differently because it's like a slip stitch detail um, but it still looks okay on the other side but it's relatively easy to modify it if you don't like the pearl bumps looking out but i really like it i think it just gives it a bit of a i don't know cool retro kind of look and the yarn that i used is Hulse coast held double in the color old gold i think it was um and it's a wool cotton blend and it fluffed up and bloomed so much when I washed and blocked this. It was amazing. I love this yarn. So it's not, it's not a hoodie I could wear in like the warmer months like right now because of the wool content. But it's definitely a kind of more transitional piece. And, you know, for the like evenings when you're like, I'm a bit chilly, throw on the hoodie and it's really comfy. And size-wise as well, like with the ease and things it's got. Um, I've got some pictures on my Instagram, like I said. It's just it's just the perfect hoodie. And I really love it, and I really want to make another one. I've got more Hulse Coast. I used a 500 gram cone, and I think I have like 130 grams of yarn left or something. So I did use most of the cone, but I had to make my sleeves longer. I had to make my... Um, the body longer to make sure it fitted me nicely because I didn't want to crop and there are a few spots because I was holding it double where I didn't catch one of the strands and I tried to like fix those but I missed a couple and in some ways I don't know just once again gives it a real retro vibe in my opinion yeah lovely pattern it was fun to knit 
because you knit it the other way around so you don't have to purl the whole time and yeah it was just really fun it was a good test knit I don't think there were really any issues with the pattern um and yeah I would totally do it again I love the color I've got plenty more cones like I said so I could could do plenty more in different colors but I'd highly recommend this pattern if you're looking for a hoodie it's not tricky at all so uh, the hood is relatively straightforward as well with picking up stitches and things and yeah I don't think there was anything really too tricky the hood is just like a step up from doing like a normal raglan so highly recommend the pattern and I would like to make more in the future because I think it is just so practical and versatile and then <laughs> the other finished object that I have is another one of my test knits um because I was working on three last time that I did a video and two of them are not done and now I just have one left so the next one that I had to focus on was the love magic dress by disco stitch and yes it is done and it is washed and it is blocked and it is beautiful really hard to show off in a video though um but I will do my best and either with this video probably the next one though um I'll try and include some footage so you can actually like see it properly because of how hard it is to show off but it is done so I used Phil Kalana Peruvian Highland wool in the color juicy green and I have just under two skeins left where is that other one like I really just had to do like two rows of a sleeve with one of the skeins which is so annoying because it means I just have like most of a skein okay i can't find it um so the whole dress used just over 800 grams like i used a couple of meters from uh another ball of this i was hoping i'd have a, exactly 100 grams left but it didn't work out but yeah when i hold it up it kind of just looked like oh yeah it's a raglan that that's cool <laughs> but then you know it's like the love magic sweater um, it's got these epic sleeves. So I did the small bell ones because I'm not really about the drama. Like, this is enough drama for me. This is already a bit more. <laughs> and I just knew the small bell ones would be more practical for me. So the sleeves were really fun. The first one I think I did in a day and a half. And then the second one I just did like in a, in a day on the weekend. Uh, because it's really fun. You've got decreases up until the elbow. And then you've got these increases and then you've got lace come like at the end and it's just a lot of fun. I normally enjoy sleeves, but this was like extra enjoyable. But once you split for sleeves, you then do some waist shaping um, just to kind of help with keeping the weight of the skirt up. Um, I didn't do the full waist shaping because I felt like it was going to cinch in too much and then I wasn't going to feel comfortable wearing it. And then you have um, a lot of increases over, I think, two rows um, to, for the skirt. And then at the bottom, you've got the lace detail again. Um, a bit more than in the sleeve. So I think, yeah, in the dress, you have like an extra repeat or something. But for both of them, you can just do however many you want. I've tried it on before blocking. It only just came off the blocking mat, so I haven't been able to wear it yet. But... I love it. <laughs> I've always wanted like a knitted dress, but then also I've always wanted like a um actually a jumper, but a dress will do in this color yarn by Phil Kalana because I think it's so epic. But yeah, it's <laughs> beautiful and I love it so much. I don't think it's a pattern I would make again because it's a statement piece dress with the sweater, I think doing more than one is kind of okay but like a knitted dress is I don't know it just feels a lot more statement and so I'm like I don't I already struggled enough with choosing a color the first time I don't need that struggle again and so I wouldn't I don't think I'd make another one at least not for myself but you know if a friend was like oh I really love it I'd want one I probably would do it it was really fun and surprisingly even though you then have these increases and you have to knit a really long portion for the skirt. I think it was like 17 inches or something before the lace, which is a lot when you've already done like some waist shaping and things as well. And you've got a lot of stitches on the needles, 
But it wasn't a drag, it wasn't a problem at all. I really enjoyed knitting it. I think the fact that these are 50 gram balls and you've got 100 meters in each of them just means that you're constantly motivated by starting a new ball. And because it's non-superwash, 100% wool, I just felted my ends together. So I just had the beginning and the end of the dress and the beginning and the end of the sleeves just weave in at the end. Um, because it's warm, it didn't take too long to dry. I would not want to try and dry this in winter because there is it's thick. Um, because it is like a DK worsted weight yarn. But I think I made the right choice with the type of yarn. It's got a beautiful drape to it, but it's also got a lot of structure to it. And yeah, can't wait to get wear out of this. And I think even though it is, like I said, a statement piece and in this color, I do think it doesn't have to be a dress for like a special occasion. Like I think it can just be a, you know, in autumn or early winter, if it's not too cold yet, you can just wear this maybe some tights and head to the shops and buy yourself some bread and milk and look epic. <laughs> um, yeah, so we'll see how much wear I get out of it, but I'm just so happy I have a knitted dress. And for some reason, it was easier to do than a jumper. I don't know why. Um, there's something else I wanted to say, but I can't remember now. But yeah, so... Hopefully you'll see that in the future and we'll see how it wears because part of me is like, it weighs, like I said, just over 800 grams, which is a lot of fabric and a lot of it is in the skirt. So we'll see how it kind of holds up and if it stretches out, if it pills and we shall see, but it's a big one and it's finished. Those are all my whips. Nope. Those are all my finished objects. I'm not that far through the video yet. Um, I always have a lot of whips, don't I? Let's start with, there it is. An old one where I'll just give a quick update just to remind myself to keep working on it. I've shared that I've been working on the end of last mitts by Skandia for quite a while now. And I had finished the first one, it was too big. Then I finished another one and discovered, yep, that's the perfect size. So I made two left ones and have now unraveled the bigger left mitten that I made and I'm now making the right mitten with the yarn left over from the first one I made. So in total, I'll have made three mittens. <laughs> I'm getting a bit bored of it. But you can see I haven't done a lot yet. I've started the color work for the cuff and it is just one of those projects like color work I sometimes am in love with and can't get enough of and then all of a sudden I'm like I need a break from you. <laughs> and currently I'm in a I need a break sort of phase. So I haven't really worked on this for quite a while. It's really warm. So working with um, Rama Phenol is just a bit of a struggle when is this warm. So I just kind of left it. I'm like, I currently don't need them because of the weather. Um, so I'm in no rush to finish these and I'll just get to them when I get to them. Like I'm not too fussed about it, but I just thought I'd share. I have started the second one and we'll slowly work on it. So next time you see them will probably be once both of them are now done. Um, but I thought I'd give an update on that. And hopefully they'll be done at some point soon because I don't really want to work on them anymore. Three mittens isn't too many. It's one too many. Um, another old project that I've had on the needles for quite a while, but it's a bigger one and well, me and shawls, right? <laughs> So this is the Fru Alstad from 52 Weeks of Shawls. And it doesn't look like much because I've got so many stitches. But you start out with this moss stitch um, at the bottom and then you've got a couple of different uh, textured charts that you work your way through. And they're really hard to kind of see because it's not blocked yet. But I'm on the final chart and I've finished like the first half of the chart. And I'm on my third and final skein of yarn but that was in Austria. Um, yeah, so you can see the ends. I'm on the third one now. I'll have plenty of yarn. I'll have over 500 stitches at the end and have to do an eye called bind off. But I do love how it's looking. It's just so hard to show it off on camera. So I'm hoping that will be better with blocking. But the rows are really long. The chart is fine when you're working a right side row because you can kind of just look at what your previous row was and it kind of 
follows on and is quite intuitive. But on the back, you have to read the chart left to right instead of right to left. And then you also have to kind of think backwards and be like, okay, if I want a pearl bump on the front, I now have to do a knit stitch. And I just require a lot of brain power to do this sometimes. So my right side rows are really quick. And then my wrong side rows, I'm like checking the chart constantly. And yeah, it's just a lot of stitches and it is tricky most of the time. And I'm still enjoying it, but I definitely have to take it slower now. And I'm just trying to do like a row or so an evening just to slowly make my way through it. I think I have about... 23 rows or something like that. I'm just over halfway with those repeats, so hopefully soon, because it'd be nice to get this off my needles because of how long I've been working on it. And that will be another shawl from 52 Weeks of Shawls. Can't believe how many I've actually kind of... Is that my third one then done from that book? Do I have another one on the needle from there? I can't remember. But yeah, so that one's progress is being made. Another old one, but one that you haven't seen in a while, because it has been in Austria, is the Taival Socks, I think is how you pronounce it, by Sari Nordland. And last time, I think, I had, like, most of the ribbing done and was maybe starting the chart, but here it is. <laughs> Not much to show right now. I've literally done one uh, repeat of the cable chart. It's not lace, it's cable. But I have finished the first one. It's not blocked and looks terrible unblocked <laughs> because of how, like, how fluffy it is. And it's got this beautiful like cable pattern running across the front and then up into the leg where it's all the way around. And it does have a long cuff. And I started the second one and just recently finished working the cuff. And like I said, I'm on the first repeat of the cable. And I always need a couple of repeats of the cable to get into it. And then I enjoy doing cables. But like the first, if I do one repeat and then stop, and then another day pick it up, do a repeat and stop, I find cabling really tedious and not fun. But when I really kind of work on multiple repeats and do a couple, I then really find it addictive. So if I actually sat down and bothered, I know I could finish the entire leg in an evening. And then the heel doesn't take long and then the foot isn't too bad because you only have to cable on the top and yeah it's just another project that i know like won't take me long to get off the needles but then you know there's this, still this mental block in my head about it's cabling even though i quite like cabling now but i've just figured out why i have this mental block and it is just when i stop and start constantly with these so i've kind of just left it for now um, and when I pick it up is when I then want to try and work through it and finish it. But the yarn is by Rico Design, the Alpaca Luxury Socks, which is 62% virgin wool, 23% polyamide, and 15% alpaca. So the alpaca is why it's so like fluffy. And it's a sock yarn because of the polyamide. So I am on the second one. I have finished the first one. And hopefully I can get that done at some point soon just so for the colder when the colder weather eventually hits again it will be nice to have those already done and I'd like to make them again I just it uses sport weight yarn for socks and I don't have a lot of sport weight yarn definitely not appropriate for socks so we'll see if I, I can always buy yarn but I'm trying to use stash you know <laughs> I think oh there's one more that you've seen before um and everything else is new, I believe. Oh, there's the other skein. But yeah, so you can see I didn't use much of it. Um, the other one you've seen is the other test knit that I've been working on, which is the Sundial sweater by Iris. Um, and last time I just showed you a swatch, I think. And this is where I'm at now. I love it. I love this design so much. I think it's so unique because it is just like a rib design, but it's broken rib, not just plain old rib. So it just gives it a little bit more, you know, of an edge, a bit of flavor. <laughs> and I've just split for sleeves like yesterday, the day before. So I haven't done too much on it yet. I have about another month before this needs to be done. 
I'm not too worried about it. Um, it's just the increasing for the yoke, which took a bit more kind of effort and paying attention. And there were a few issues with the pattern, so I had to go back a little bit, but it wasn't anything really bad. And that's just, you know, that's what test knitting is for. But yeah, so I just need to do the body and the two sleeves. And like I always do, um, I'm going to finish the yarn I currently have and then move on to the sleeves just to make sure I've got enough. So it's knit with a fingering weight yarn and a mohair. The mohair I'm using is Knitting for Olive Silk, Soft Silk Mohair in the color Dusty Artichoke. And Soft, nope, Holst Super Soft in the color Spring. And this was like the 200 gram grab bags or whatever they're called. I've got two of them, so I've got plenty of this, but I might need an extra skein of this. So we'll see. Hopefully I can just get it to work because then it was completely stash yarn, which is always a nice feeling. And it's really funny. It, it doesn't, in my opinion, show up when I kind of like just hold the sweater up. But when you see it in person, there's a couple of areas where the color of the mohair, which is lighter really than the fingering weight on I'm using. But this also has some like yellowy and lighter spots in it as well. So there's certain points where I think I say to people, like, it looks like my sweat is moldy and I'm kind of here for it. <laughs> so I'll try and see if I can include, like, some footage or, like, a picture of a close-up of the yarn so you can kind of see what I mean, but I think it's really funny. Um, but, yeah, I just don't think it shows up in, like, the, the big picture. You need a close-up of it. But yeah, beautiful design. The sundial top is already out, I think, and is one I'd really like to make as well because I think it's gorgeous. Um, and for those grab bags I was talking about, you get like 200 grams, but it's always like randomly sized little balls of it. Um, but it does mean the yarn's more affordable and because it's 100% wool, you can just felt it together. It's not superwash. So I also not have a lot of ends to sew in with this project and I'll obviously have the ends for the mohair to sew in um, but I always tie a knot because the mohair is quite thin and then weave those two ends together into my jumper with the mohair being grapey and stuff it works out quite well. So that's the other test knit. The only one I currently have and probably the only one I want to do for a while because Three was fine, like I wasn't on, I didn't struggle with any of the deadlines. It was only the no sweatshirt, pardon me, the no sweatshirt where I was getting close to the deadline. Um, and I can't remember, it was a relatively short test knit, that's probably why, but the dress, no issue, we even got an extension. Um, I think I would have still had about a week from when I finished it, but we've got an extra like two weeks now or something. Um, and like I said, the sundial, I've got another month and I've got the yoke out of the way. That's like the thing that always takes the longest, the most stitches and the body should just be really easy. Fly through that. And I like doing sleeves. So new things. First one is one I started in Austria where, you know, I was surrounded by my yarn, my big stash. And even though I was surrounded by like, I brought two projects with me, the sundial sweater and the no sweatshirt because I was like two test knits. I need to work on them um, and I didn't have the yarn yet for the dress um, only the one skein I showed last time and then I was in Austria and was like I don't have anything to work on <laughs> even though I had those two test knits and I had my old projects in Austria and then I looked at my yarn stash and was like I want to knit something new <laughs> so one evening um, I decided to cast on the Laulu, Laulu shawl by Sari Nordland because my mum had made it and it looked so cute so this is how far I got I did pretty much all of this in Austria in the car. It uses a lot of charts. Apparently there's issues with the written instructions. I have no idea if anything's been fixed. Apparently that I found the charts fine. So I'm just working through the charts. And the yarn I'm using is Sugar Baby Alpaca by Wool and the Gang. It's just some yarn I already had in stash at, ho at home. I think I've got like four, six skeins, should be more than enough to do it. You can also alter like how long and wide and things it is. It's not meant to be a very big like scarf or shawl. Um, just a little like head scarf almost. And yeah, I just really enjoy the texture. It's a lot of fun to knit and 
yeah, it's cables, but I don't really need to use a cable needle for these because they're like the biggest is two by two. I think the little ones aren't even cables, no, they're not. Um, so it's just like two by two cables, and it's fine typically without a cable needle. Um, yeah, and it's just a lot of fun. I really am enjoying it, and it's one I really want to work on, but kind of just not yet. I'll give it some time, get some other things off the needles. Um, and then I can sit and because it's all charted it is quite straightforward but you do kind of need to look at the chart every now and then and so I like to work at like a proper table and not just on the sofa so that kind of prevents me from working on it whenever I really want to um, then one of my make nines where I had the yarn in Austria and showed it during um my like stash video of what yarn I've got in Austria is the Cindy's Choice socks uh, by Isabel Kramer from 52 Weeks of Socks. You can see they're like big kind of stockings almost. And they've got this really nice color work design um, and then a contrast little too. And the yarn that I'm using is the recommended one, which is Rauwerk DK, which is Bavarian Merino. So it's quite a rustic merino, but I really like it and it was beautiful to knit with. Cannot remember the colours. <laughs> but so the first one is done and I did start the second. Now because 52 weeks of socks is just, you know, a book, I don't, you don't get a digital copy with the book. I find it really hard to do colour work from the book. Um, and so I've kind of just lost my mojo a bit with these and I just need to kind of draw the chart out myself and it will be easier. Or just look at the one I've already done to be able to go, oh yeah, that's what you want me to do. Easy, I don't need the chart anymore. But I did really enjoy these because um, the colour work isn't hard, the chart. It's just constantly having to check and like open the book again. It just was a bit annoying. And the thing that was kind of the longest and most tedious is just the fact you've got a lot of stitches here because of how long the socks are. And then these decreases that you have to do here so it then kind of fits your foot well um, and your ankle. This was just a bit tedious. And then everything else was quite quick because it is thick yarn and relatively thick needles. Yeah, 3.75. So this one really didn't take me long. Um, and it is once again one of those projects where I'm like, it wouldn't take me that long to finish the second and I'd have something else with my needles, but apparently I'm just not doing it. But really love the yarn and I'd love to make a jumper. Like I'll have plenty of this one left. This is the first skein of my main color, but I have another one. Um, and I'll have leftovers and I'll see what I'll do with those in the future. So that's the Cindy's choice. Then that one. Yes. Um, so like I said, when I was in Austria, I kind of brought back some yarn with me and I had um, two skeins of yarn that I bought at the first ever Yorkshire Yarn Fest, which was in like November 2019, something like that, before <laughs> everything went crazy in the world. And one of the dyers there, I don't think she dyes anymore, and it's under like Bramble and Me or something like that is her name. I can't remember, but I think she doesn't die anymore. Um, she had a stall there and had a little basket of like reduced skeins for whatever reason. And she had two of this like, it was Lab, I think it's called Northern Skies, the color, and it's uh, BFL with cashmere and silk. So I do think you can see it has like this beautiful luster. And I love BFL because it's a bit more like woolly and just beautiful. And I think it's naturally dyed and it was reduced from like 20 or 18 pounds to 16. And I was like, okay, yeah, two skeins of DK. I'll figure out what to make with it. And I was like, what do you do with 400 meters of DK and didn't know what to do for a really long time and just had them sitting in Austria. And then when I was in Austria, I was like, I'm going to bring those back and I'm going to make a ranunculus because I know you can get with the smallest size you can get it like a crop t-shirt and I was like that will be perfect for summer um and with the gauges in it and it will be relatively loose so it doesn't matter that it's still wool and then when I started working on it and I always thought when I wound up the first one which was by hand into a ball I was like this is really thin for DK weight yarn like this is feels more like fingering weight 
And then as I was knitting the ranunculus and I finished the first skein and I was through the yoke, I'd done two short sleeves and I had like a decent amount of the body. I was like, this can't be DK weight because I should have only just, you know, gotten through maybe some of the yoke, not all of it with, you know, 200 meters of yarn. And I was like, no, so it's definitely fingering weight yarn. So I'm a bit annoyed because I could have done like, mislabeling and stuff happens I'm not annoyed at the dye I'm annoyed at myself and I'm trusting in myself that it's fingering weight because with 800 meters of fingering weight yarn there's a lot more you can do but I still love it um this is what it looks like so far so it has my block so there's like the yoke is still like all scrunched up not um it definitely needs a block but you can see how long like the body already is and I still have this is my second skein so it's not DK. It's definitely fingering weight. Um, but I'm really happy with it. It means I now get a decent body out of it instead of a cropped one. I could go back and do like longer sleeves. I sh I'll have plenty of yarn to do that. But I actually want short sleeves because I want it to be like a throw over piece. Um, and even though it's knit at such a loose, loose gauge, because I'm using six millimeter needles. Yes, it's see through, but it's actually... I don't know, I'm quite surprised by it. Um, that it is actually got some like depth and structure and like it looks pretty good. It's just hard to work with six millimeter needles in general, but especially if the yarn's quite thin as well. I'm just not enjoying the body. The yoke, amazing. And I understand why everyone knits these and yep, I'm part of the ranunculus team and we'll probably be making more in the future. But yeah, really enjoying, well, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the yoke. I enjoyed most of the body, but now I'm just like, oh, it just drags on. Um, and I'll have yarn left because there's only so long I need to make the body. But because it's fingering weight yarn, I can just use it in some color work. Uh, BFL is great for color work. And I can also, because it's hand dyed, um, if I want to do the like advent calendar giveaway again this year, I've got some yarn from this that I can wind off for that. So we'll see, but really it's really pretty like i really like it and i can't wait to see what it kind of looks like when it's blocked because if you kind of like stretch it out a bit i think it looks beautiful the color as well so my first ranunculus i've had the pattern for a while but kind of just haven't knit it because i was like mm, i don't know what yarn to use and things like that then another one of my um make nine projects last year i was like you may only have one make nine on the needles at one time. Once you finish it, you can start the next one. This year, I'm not doing that. And because I'm not doing that, it means I've actually <laughs> done quite well with my make nines, at least better than I have in the past. Because um, last year I did one. <laughs> and this year I've done two already. Uh, the Cindy's Choice are a make nine, so that's the third one. This one and the Satsuki, so that's five. And four that I haven't started yet. I think that's right. Unless I've already done more and I can't remember. But anyway, the Make Nine project I'm currently working on is the Aosta Summer Top by the Knit Pearl Girl. Um, and it's meant to be a more like fitted negative ease sort of top. The color's so hard to show off. Um, it's a bit more accurate. It's kind of a coppery color. It's not as art, as red as it. It appears to be in the camera but it's the aosta one so you can see it's got the andalusian stitch and i've got one sleeve already done because it is a t-shirt i've made mine as long because while it's meant to be it's meant to have negative ease i'm making one that's like three sizes bigger than intended because i don't want negative ease i want positive ease um so i haven't had to make my sleeves as long because it's a raglan one so you can see it's already quite long on me and I just did a relatively short sleeve because with the raglan it kind of then means the sleeve already sits a bit lower because I'm making it so much bigger so I still have the second sleeve to go um I've got the needle on there just haven't started because I couldn't be bothered last night and I've done a little bit of the body I have this much left from the first sleeve so it was a full skein until I did the sleeve I'll do the second sleeve, then the rest will go into the body, and then I have one more skein. Do I think I will get out <laughs> um, enough of length? No, I don't think so. So I might have to buy another skein. 
Um, I know there's, you know, the issue and controversy with We Are Knitters and Zara, the collab, um, which I talked about a little bit in a previous video. I don't want to get into it now. Um, so I might see if I can... I don't mind buying another skein. Um, I think their cotton yarn is really good. So this is the Pima cotton. Um, and I do really like it and I do like a lot of their yarns. And while I don't like the Zara collab idea, I'm like, I'm happy to support the things I do like that they do. I mean, this is some of the best cotton I've ever worked with. So if I have to buy more, I'm okay with it, but I might see if I can find, like if anyone's de-stashing a skein or two. Um, ideally, I'd like to try and make a work with what I've got. So we'll see. Um, I'm gonna try and, you know, I'm gonna knit as long as I can with the yarn I have and see if I can make it work. Otherwise, I'm more than happy to kind of, you know, look online, see if anyone's selling a skein or two, depending on how much I think I need. But I'd also be okay just ordering it from We Are Knitters. Like, if it happens, it happens. I think there's been worse things in the knitting community than the Zara collab, but it also just wasn't very smart. But We Are Knitters is a pretty big company, so I'm not actually that surprised that they've done it, which I think is why I'm not that, like, annoyed by it. But it just wasn't smart. Um... Yeah, I've really enjoyed that. The original is done with Sunday, I think, held double. So it is a wool. I'm using, like I said, 100% cotton. Um, and this cotton is just so gorgeous. I love the color. I love just the feel of it. Um, and it's a, it's fun to knit because the four pattern, like four row pattern repeat of the Aosta means you just get through the body and even the sleeves quite quickly because you do like a repeat and then you're like, oh, I'll just do another one. And it's just a bit more exciting because every fourth row you've got something different happening. Um, yeah, really enjoying it. And I don't think it will take too long to actually finish that uh, 4.5 millimeter needles DK weight yarn. It's great. Anything else? Um, I don't have it here to show. But the leftover yarn from the no sweatshirt, the like 130 grams or whatever of Hulse Coast I've left, I have swatched and have started the Cozy Classic Glide by Jessie Made Design. Um, it's going to be, I'm holding it single because I don't have that much yarn left, but it's creating this, like my swatch was already amazing because it does bloom quite a lot. Um, I'm able to use this quite thin yarn as a fingering weight yarn and it's going to create such a light garment. Um, and that's very light and breathable, but still has a decent amount of coverage because of how much it blooms out. Before blocking, it's quite see-through, but after blocking, it's amazing. So hopefully I'll get a chance to work on that soon and show it off next time and actually have some, I have like, I've done like two rows or something. Um, and it was one of those projects where I very much had like a moment of, I finished it and was like, I want to do something with the rest of the yarn. I don't just want to put it back in my stash. Like I have this strong urge to immediately figure out what I'm going to do with it and start. And so then I spent a long time kind of looking and trying to figure out what I could do because I knew I didn't have that much left. Um, and even though Hulse Coast has a decent amount of yardage, I think it's like 700 meters per hundred grams. I was like holding it single, it's so thin, like what could I really do with it? And then I thought this cozy, some cozy classic light would be a good idea because it can be a t-shirt that you can just wear. And you know, with the swatch I saw would actually provide enough coverage. Like it would be dense enough, uh, but it could also be worn as a kind of more like throw over piece if you need like another layer or something. And yeah, so it is small needles cause it's a thin yarn, but I'm excited to kind of work on that. And it's something I can kind of work on in the summer and the warmer weather we've been having. But yeah, so much talking. Um, just, I normally don't really show my acquisitions anymore, but this is something I really wanted to show off. Um, my mum is currently visiting me here in Germany and for June, July and August, Germany has this amazing thing on, which is also causing a lot of issues in the country as well where for one month you pay nine euros and you can use pretty much all the public transport in Germany. You can't use things like the really fast trains between cities, but any sort of like regional and like kind of trains, 
you get to use for those nine euros a month. So you pay nine euros at the beginning of the month and for the whole month you can travel as much as you want and any way you want as long as it's kind of these like regional trains. Which means it takes a lot longer to get anywhere um, and also so many people are traveling <laughs> right now which can make it quite hard but for nine euros I'm willing to kind of you know stand on a train and as long as people are sticking to the mask rules that annoys me when people aren't anyway that's another discussion but and I'm happy to kind of you know take a later train or change my week around I have the flexibility of my work that I can just work on the weekend instead and then travel during the middle of the week and so because my mum's visiting we bought the nine euro ticket and even just using it for the tram to get from Griesheim into Darmstadt it's amazing because normally for nine euros I'd be able to just be able to like two days of travel or if I get a week ticket it would cost me a bit more than nine euros so a whole month of even just being able to get into Darmstadt and not have to pay anything else amazing but we went to Heidelberg last week I think it was and I'd been there already with my mom and my dad when they were both here but mom and I were like you know what let's do it let's have a little day trip um, have another look around not as stressed because we didn't have a specific train to get back on we could go on whatever we wanted and there were multiple trains we could have caught and I think there was even like a bus or like some trams and things and just depends how you want to travel and how quickly but we then kind of spent some time looking around and when we'd been there before we um, had been to one of the like main yarn shops uh, which is also in Darmstadt which kind of has a lot of Rico design and that's kind of it but I saw online and so did mum that there's a shop a little bit further outside of it's still in Heidelberg but it's outside of the city centre so you just catch either like a local train or the bus which is included in the nine euro ticket um and then just walk for like a couple of minutes and you get to this woman's house who has a shop in her house where she sells um, commercial yarn but also hand dyed yarn. So she had I think at least one hand dyer from Germany um, whose yarn she was stocking but she also had hedgehog fibers so they're based in Ireland which means if you're in the EU you don't actually have to pay tax for it to be shipped to you but there is just the issue of like shipping quite expensive because it's international um and so if you can get it from her easy because i think the prices were pretty much exactly the same as what you'd pay from the actual shop um as in like the actual dyer and then she also had life in the long grass which is in the uk and so it was just amazing to be able to get it and i picked up some yarn <laughs> and i wanted to share it because it's just you know if anyone is in kind of Germany or in the EU and is after some life in the long grass. I know some other shops sell it as well. Um, but this really is just like one woman who's just, you know, does everything by herself. And I think it's a nice thing to support. So I got these two colors. I have three skeins of this color, which is called Ford Fjord. <laughs> if you watch D&D Critical Role, you'll understand why I said Ford and not Fjord, but it's Fjord. And this is Cool Dawn. And I originally was thinking so I've got three skeins of this one which would be my main color this is a contrast color and I was thinking it was some kind of like a Jennifer Steingast design a color work one but then when I got home over the last few days since I bought it I've kind of been inspired and I think I might do my own um color work design with it but we'll see I might start swatching at some point and I'm in no rush to make it and I do want to do something nice with the yarn and not potentially ruin it by doing my own design but we'll see I'll, I'll play around a bit but I was just really drawn to these colors and I think it's amazing and um, she also sells like I said commercial yarn and things like that and yeah I just thought I'd mention it because while you can just go to her shop with the nine euro ticket I think it's really cool because I can just kind of go back one day and make an appointment to kind of see her uh, because she's not always open because it's just at home but she has the option to always kind of be at home so it's quite cool if you've got weird times when you're available that you can arrange to kind of visit her whenever it works for you really and you can also just get in contact with her say what you're after and she can just ship it to you so that's cool as well and you're supporting like you know local woman I think that's cool so I thought I'd mention that and also mentioned that, yeah, because it's beautiful. Um, I don't think I said it. It's 100% non-superwash Corridale, 
400 meters per 100 grams so it's a fingering weight and it's just absolutely stunning um yeah so colorwork sweater coming in the future either my own design or just a jennifer stein guess one or something yes so i did want to talk about kind of you know i was in austria and then i'm back but like i said i think i might just leave it for a different video and just leave it there for now um my giveaway from a previous video is still running so if you want to enter it and find out what you can win and the details for all of it go to my previous video um and i did have a couple of people both my german and my english one ask some questions in that video in the comments saying like i'd want to win and then they had a question and i can't respond to the comments because otherwise the whole thing just gets really complicated with like contacting someone when they've won and the comment picker and stuff so if you have any questions, I will eventually answer them once the giveaway is ended. I think I said the end date for the 17th of July, just so there's plenty of time and no stress on my end, really. I did it for selfish reasons. Um, if you could comment below this one instead, um, otherwise, you know, I will get to those comments eventually. Um, but currently I've just been like hearting them to be like, I've read them, but I can't answer your question right now. And... Also, if anyone ever has any questions, if you're curious about my life, if you're curious about my knitting journey, if you're just kind of wanting, have looking for advice or have questions about knitting in general or something, um, always feel free to, you know, write me an email. Some people have been doing that or leave me a comment and I can either do a like video or just kind of comment, respond to your comment. I'm exhausted now. <laughs> I am going to tidy up, probably make myself a cup of tea and do some more knitting and eventually have dinner because I'm getting hungry. But yes, so hopefully for my next video, it won't be as long. And I really want to do a video in the future where I haven't finished anything. I want to kind of get into that of having filmed often enough that I haven't finished anything because I'm starting to give the impression, like I'm getting the impression that I'm giving the impression that I'm a really quick knitter and I can get through projects super quickly. But it's more that a lot of time has passed since my video, like previous video. But I'm not a, like the fast, slow knitter thing kind of bothers me a bit because I'm a process knitter. So fast knitting is kind of like the opposite of what I want because I want a project to last for as long as possible. But um, I just think I'm an average knitter speed wise. I don't really know. I don't know what's fast. I don't know what's slow. Like depends on the project as well. Depends on the yarn. Depends on the needles and all of that. But anyway, <laughs> I will stop talking now. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for entering the giveaway in my previous episode. And yeah, just thank you for, you know, being here, supporting the channel, even just by watching the video, liking it, commenting and um, it's all really much appreciated and I'll leave all my links below with Instagram and uh, where else am I? Ravelry, I've tried to be a bit more active and with the test knitting especially, putting my project on there. Um, Ko-fi, I'm trying to do a few things, it's just hard doing all of it and working but I will make it work because I want to and I think that's all the places you can really find me. And my email address will always be below as well in case you need anything. Yes, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!